Hi everyone, Kyle here. Hope everyone is well and staying safe. About this time last year, I made a series of videos about making your own templates for cardboard buildings for tabletop games terrain. Now, most of the stuff in those videos is still valid, but both the software I use and the way I put my model buildings together has changed a bit since then. So in this video, we're going to have a look at the new and updated template making method. In this example, I will be making a template for the watchtower I built in the previous video. And when I'm done, I will leave the finished templates on my Facebook page and on my site. Links to both will be in the description below. The template will be bare bones, so it will give you the general shape of the building. After that, it's up to you to texture it and finish it any way you like. I will be using Blender and GIMP to generate the templates. Both of these excellent pieces of software are free for download and use, and you can find links to them in the description. While I will not be showing this step in the video because it is fairly straightforward, I also use Scribus to lay out the final printable file. Scribus is also free to use and download, and you can find the link below along with the others. This will be a fairly long video, so I will be leaving timestamps in the description to the main sections. Let's get started. Okay, I've got uh, Blender open in uh, modeling mode, and we have the default scene here. And we can just start working right away because we're going to base our model off this cube. First thing I'm going to do is to go to the uh, scene properties and change the units to millimeters. That way we can uh, scale this exactly. So whatever we bit here will be exactly the right size. Next, we're going to open the uh, properties for this cube over here. And right now that's uh, about two meters wide. So we we'll want to shrink it a little. In our case, we want the base to be nine centimeters by nine centimeters. So that's 90 millimeters. And we want it to be eight centimeters tall. Okay, so we have this slightly flattened cube now. Next, I want to bring it up so that it lies on this plane. Right now, it's centered on the zero position, so this edge is at minus four centimeters. I want to bring it up so that uh, I can reference everything of zero, which makes it easier to uh, think about the numbers. All I have to do is bring this up by 40 millimeters. Okay, so we have uh, the cube lying flat on the surface. Okay, last thing before we start modifying this, I'm going to go to object. Apply and apply all transforms. Okay, so this has now become the, def the basic size and position for this cube. Okay, next I'm going to press tab to go into editing mode. And you can see now that uh, we have these uh, handles here which we can use to set individual uh, points. I'm going to switch to face editing mode and select loop cut. What I'm going to do is uh, cut this in half and remove this part. Reason being that the tower model is uh, mostly symmetrical, so we're only going to work on one half of it. <coughs> We're only going to work on one half of it and uh, then mirror it. So we're going to have to do half the work really. Okay, B for box select. Oops, sorry, I'm going to face section mode again. B for box select. And hit delete to remove the faces. 
I'm also going to add and delete all of the button because we're not going to need that. And we should be left with this shape. Okay, next I'm going to bring in the edges at the top. So it goes from 9 centimeters to 7 centimeters. You could scale this, but since we know the measurements here, it's faster to do it like this. There we go. Okay, next I'm going to extrude this face to build the uh, upper floor of the tower. So the face selection, select the top face, <coughs> and hit E for extrusion. Now we can uh, position this by hand, but it's easier to just type in the number because we know that. And we're going to go up 95 millimeters. The 95 is because there are eight centimeters for the uh, upper floor plus 15 millimeters for the uh, parapet wall up, up uh, on the top. So we just do it in uh, one extrusion. The extrusion is adding this uh, face, which we won't need. So delete that. And we can start cutting the detail into the, uh, into the wall. Go to do to loop cut again. And that it's this uh, edge on the inside. And what I'm going to do here is move this point so that the line is completely vertical. Right now, as you see here, it's following the line of the wall. So I'm going to point selection, selecting this point to get a reference, and that's 17.5 millimeters. This is always measuring of the uh, zero position. Okay, and it's now completely vertical. And I think I'm going to move all of this in by about half. to worry about uh, straightening this edge because we're not going to use that. And that should be about right. Remember we're working on uh, halves here. Maybe a little more. Just make it a clean 12 millimeter. Okay, so that gives us the width of the doors. I'm going to add some more cuts in here. It gives us the height of the door. And I'm going to do another one here and bring it down a little. So we have the bottom of the door. Right, now we have those outlined it. We can go back to face selection. The E button again. And I'm going to bring it in by uh, 5 millimeters. Okay, hitting minus 5 on the keyboard. And this creates this excess face which we're not going to need. So select and delete. Next, I'm going to bring in this face to create the lower door. Again, E for extrusion, and I'm going to bring it in 10 millimeters. And delete these two excess faces we don't need. Now, in this case, you see that the 
face that was created here is at a slight angle. That's because the extrusion will always work perpendicular to the surface you're extruding. And all we're going to do is to bring up these two lines. And then move this one back so it's a nice straight line. So I'm going to edge selection. Know that this is at 4 millimeters and this should be at 0. Start with that. This goes to 40, or 14, sorry. And now I'm going to move this to match this one. That's it. Let's make it a nice clean territory. And move this one to match. And you have a nice clean vertical wall there. I'm going to do the window next. Now the window is about half the size of the door, so I'm just going to Add more loop cuts here. Okay, that's the, very, the uh, height and the width. Face select again. E minus five, and again delete this excess face we don't need. Okay, right, we're going to uh, work on the uh, roof next, but uh, first we're going to mirror this so that we have one complete object. So I'm going to go to face selection again, hit A to select everything, and add a mirror modifier. Okay, change it so it reflects on Y. And not on the X. Okay, to close this off, I'm just going to apply this. Sorry, I have to go out of edit mode, back to object mode, press tab again, and apply. If I go back to edit mode now, we have one complete object. Okay, we're going to add the roof next. So I'm going to select only the top faces, holding shift so I can select multiple at the same time. And I'm going to select the inset face tool. Okay. <coughs> Now this will give, give us the thickness of the walls. In my case, I'm designing this for uh, one millimeter thick material, but obviously if you're uh, going to use a foam board or something thicker, just uh, go ahead and uh, use that. In this case, I'm just going to hit one for one millimeter and hit enter. Okay, next I'm going to hit E for extrude again. move this to uh, its final position. I'm going to go for minus 20 for 20 millimeters because as I said in the previous video with the uh, tower bit, because models have bases you want this to be a bit deeper than it's actually uh, than it actually would be in reality. That way uh, they won't stick so far over the top of the wood. Okay, and that's basically the uh, model done. One last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a reference line on this face so that I know where to uh, put the markers for supports so that when you put the model together you know where to glue the supports for the, uh, for the roof. And then I'm going to go to wireframe mode. Any side view. Hit 
rotating or select nothing, either way. And we're going to add another loop cut there. And what we're going to do is move this loop cut over so that it matches the uh, bottom of that line. There. Okay, now when we uh, When we extract the wireframe, we'll have a line to use as a reference for that. Okay, that's about it for the modeling. So uh, what we're going to do next is mark the seams to break this apart, break this apart so that we can uh, flatten it into a nice template. Before we start unfolding this, let's uh, have a look at what we're trying to achieve here. Basically, imagine this is already made of uh, paper and you want to lay it out flat. So what we're going to do is we're going to mark some uh, cuts in different places so it can uh, open neatly. Another thing is I don't want to uh, take all the uh, parts right now. Reason being that uh, once I unfold it, I want to export it into uh, an image editor to clean out uh, these additional lines and uh, add nodes and so on. And if I uh, copy every face, then that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on, places where I can introduce errors. Since all the faces are identical in profile, I'm just going to take uh, a sample of each Basically, this face and this face, this face, plus the roof maybe, and then uh, base all the others on that. That makes uh, it easier to avoid introducing errors. Now, in my case, I'll also be taking the uh, openings here, but depending on what material you're using, you might not need to do that. For example, if you're using foam board, then this thickness is already provided by the material, so you don't need to take the inside here. You just need to mark out where the hole is. Right. So, as I said, let's try to uh, see what we're trying to achieve here. I want to start by marking out uh, the outline of this box. Make sure edge selection mode is uh, enabled. And I'm just going to take the outline. Okay, going to edge and uh, mark C. So what this does basically is uh, it makes uh, this section separate from everything else. It's a separate part now. But that's not enough to uh, get it uh, working entirely. Let me explain. I'm going to select everything and I'm going to go into UV editing mode. going to hit unwrap here. So this is the uh, rest of the uh, building, let's ignore that for now. And let's focus on this part. And that's our unwrapped uh, box. Now, as you can see, it's very distorted. That's because we didn't tell it where to uh, break it apart at the sides. So it's like we just literally stepped on it and squashed it. What we're going to do is we're going to take these edges, which is basically where we would uh, cut it up again over the paper box and want to lay it out flat neatly. And we're going to mark the seams on those. everything again and unwrap and again ignoring this part 
box is now nice and flat and we have the fold lines over here. Of course Blender doesn't know about uh, folding lines and so on, so we'll have to add that in a, in a image editor later. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over the model and uh, pick out the parts we need and uh, I'll get back to you right after that. Right, that should be all the parts separated. So we get back here and again unwrap. There you go, all of the parts. So I'm just going to scale this out of the way using the S shortcut and just move it off. We have all the different parts, just need to put them in a more organized layout so we can see what we're doing. These two appear to be upside down, so I'm going to flip them over. R, 180, R, 180. So it goes into the degrees that way, and these two should be okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, rearrange these so that they overlap. As I said before, I only want uh, one profile ideally to avoid introducing errors. So this way I can generate the other wall in the image editor. And only have one fixed dimension. So 
So we defeat the really good. If anyone knows a faster way of rearranging these UVs, please let me know. Okay, so wait, I want to exploit this and we're going to jump into a painted territory to clean these up. Okay, the next step should be pretty straightforward because all we're going to do is Rearrange this, trace these items out, and then uh, size them up to the final print size. First thing I'm going to do is introduce a blank layer, white behind uh, all this because that grid is giving me a headache. Okay, let's get started. We're first going to trace out this wall. So I'm going to zoom on that. Create a transparent layer and lay down some guidelines. It might actually help if I set the guideline visibility, yeah. I'm just going to select all around this and select stroke selection. Let's put a two pixel black line around it. Of course, it's not clearly visible now because uh, of the layer under it, but if we disable that, you can see it's there. And next we're going to mark out this line, which is going to be where the roof level is. So selecting part tool over here, maybe zoom in a bit closer. And the stroke pad this time. I'm going to leave a thickness of uh, two pixels here and change the line to a dashed line. There we go. Okay, so that's our first uh, blank wall. Okay, next I'm going to duplicate the layer. Nope, that didn't duplicate it. And we're going to use this one to set the door. Put the name the layer, so it's a good idea, just so that you know what you're doing. And we're going to set the guidelines for the door now. Select it, make sure that you're on the right layer. Stroke 
Book Selection and select Line again. Okay, now we've added these two. That's our second one. Okay, we're going to duplicate the blank wall again. Set the guidelines for the window this time. Okay. Again, select tool. Make sure we're on this layer. Stroke selection and stroke. We hide the others. We have our wall with the window. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over all the other uh, parts and then I'll uh, get back to you on the, how to rearrange these for printing. Okay, that took a while, but uh, now I've got everything cleaned up and all the parts are on their separate layers. Hopefully you can see that uh, it's not clear without all the uh, extra lines and stuff. I've also did a couple of tabs to the door and window pieces, so it should help uh, attach them to the uh, openings. I don't usually go for tabs all around because uh, they tend to uh, get in the way and uh, put things off work a bit but hopefully you should manage to uh, glue this no problem in fact this is the pattern i used uh, in my last uh, model okay last thing we need to do is size them up for printing so what i'm going to do is increase the canvas size To give it a plenty of size, let's say 3000. Okay, fill a new layer down here. White. Okay. Now, what I want to do is get them all in a single line and then use the dimension of the largest piece, which is this one to uh, get them to print size. That way the proportions will be preserved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a guideline. And it is fine as long as there is space. Let's move this out of the way. We can start here this way. And I'm going to start with the blank lower wall. Trying to get it as close to the guideline as possible. Okay, and hopefully I should be able to get the rest of them on the same baseline. Okay, we'll go to the door. Should probably lock this.
I'm going to take a little time to make sure that uh, these are properly aligned because everything else will depend on that. It seems that these are just a tiny bit off. Just going to zoom in a little more just to make sure. Yeah, right on the guideline. Okay, so the other layers should be more forgiving because we just need to get them in this corridor here. as long as they're in the corridor, which is established by uh, these three parts. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, box select all of the strip and crop to the selection. Okay, make sure we've got the put image of these in. Yep, still there. And finally, we're going to change the image size. The image, change this to centimeters, and I'm going to change the height to nine point five. Okay, scale that. And all I should uh, have to do now is to rearrange these into a nice A4 format. And that is that. I hope you found this video useful. If you enjoyed the content, please consider hitting the like button. And if you didn't already, maybe subscribe to this channel. And of course, don't forget to grab a copy of your templates. If you have any questions about this process, feel free to drop me a comment here or on my Facebook page. I will be happy to answer to the best of my ability. Thank you for watching and have a great day.